Well... Well, well, well. Hello, everyone. Happy Monday. And goodness, y'all haven't wasted time. <laughs> Getting that high train going already? With such force? Gracious. Look how far behind I am. We've been go we've been going a year now on the purple website, I see. That's exciting. Which means hey, I mean new sub badge color and all that, new Froyo flavor. But also hey, a year. That's cool. Let me start thanking a few people. Goodness, thanks for the 12 months. Ed is everywhere. And also Fearless son, a year of this. <laughs> right you are. Thank you for the 11 months, Arc Flash Hazard. And 12 months, Louis Hansen. Celebrate all the good times. Thanks for the 11 months, Walu. Hello to you as well. And thank you for the 12 months, Probable Futures, and Baha Bali, and Shutaro 19. 360 plus days on this purple website. And then, Midnight Skyus, thank you for 12 months as well. A whole year and a whole new flavor. And King of Doma also, 12 months. The one year anniversary. I would stay, but I am thousands of miles from home on roaming data. Have a good stream. Yeah, that's a good reason to not stay. <laughs> Have a good, I assume, vacation or trip. I don't know why you're thousands of miles from home, but have a good whatever that is. And then people are just now gifting subs now. Is this what people are doing now? Thank you for gifting five subs there, Ed is everywhere. It's very generous of you, and also generous of Baja Bali, who did the same. Five more gifted subs. And then Louis Hansen, not to be outdone, also <laughs> gifts five subs. Because y'all are just out of control already. I don't even think I was talking yet by that point. Wild. And then several more people subscribing as well. We'll, we'll actually get the stream started soon, but I'm just wanting to... <laughs> Y'all got a head start on me, and if I don't start on this now, I'm going to fall even further behind. Thank you for the 12 months, Red Astronomer. And 11 months, Dionly. I think I said your name quite wrong, but thank you. Thank you, Devourer of Gods Freya, for the 12 months. Thanks for being the entertainment for my 1,000 Euphra runs for Mog Tomes. Woo! <laughs> That's a lot of runs. Thank you, Valbatross, for 12 months. This year's better than last year. Playframe streams have been a part of that prog progress. Aw. Oh, that's very kind of you to say. I have been enjoying streaming off and on for a year. When I've got the time to. Thanks for the 12 months, Moon Decay. Working on a Labor Day? Well, sort of. I mean, this is this is fun. This is a fun thing to do. This is a thing that I've been kind of thinking of doing for half the time <laughs> this Twitch channel has existed. I just haven't really had a good window of time to do it. It's a good day. 
Thank you for subscribing, Heart of K. Welcome. Thank you for the nine months, Ezra Ordinary, and also for the ten months, RNL. All right, I'm yeah. caught up. I did it. Nope, I'm behind again. Thanks for the bits, <laughs> you goofs. <laughs> uh, but welcome, all of you. Yeah! To the stream. So what we're going to be doing today is something that I've been wanting to do for a while. Um, I enjoy talking about game music a lot. We kind of did a test run a month or two ago, uh, just sort of listening through kind of a playlist I put together of a lot of my kind of favorite video game music, just to kind of see how, how does Twitch handle that? How does, like, how does the VOD stay up when it goes over to YouTube? Does it get, like, content ID'd to heck and back? And it seemed fine. It seemed okay. Now, I don't, I'm not under the illusion that that's always going to be the case. I think, inevitably, we'll eventually play some track from some game that <laughs> gets claimed or something, but that's fine. Whatever. It's fun. So what we're going to do today is focus specifically on Final Fantasy XIV music. If you've not been playing Final Fantasy XIV or uh, watching the story mode playthrough uh, over on Playframe on our YouTube channel, which I've been doing for a year or two now, um, you will be well aware that Final Fantasy XIV has a heck of a soundtrack. And there's a lot of music in that game now that we're several expansions deep. Today, I think let's just, we're just going to focus on the base game. Not even getting into any expansions, because even if we just focus on the base game, that's going to be quite a lot. I want to see if we can narrow down the 10 best... Well, this is very subjective, but the 10 best battle themes just in A Realm Reborn. I've narrowed it down to battle themes in part because... <laughs> That's just a way to narrow things down a little bit. If we're just trying to narrow down top 10 tracks, then it just gets impossible. There's so many good tracks. These soundtracks are very large. But yeah, I think if we, even if we are just focusing on the music, which is in the base game of A Realm Reborn and just battle themes, so like stuff that happens when you get into a fight, uh, dungeon themes, trial music, stuff like that, even that is a lot of music to kind of sift through and have to try to narrow down. And there's a lot of good stuff in there. So this will keep us <laughs> pretty occupied, I think. I'm curious to see how this goes. Thank you for the three months, Miller Select. This is the first time I've paid real money for a sub and not just my Amazon Prime free one. Keep being one of the best creators on the internet. Oh, thank you. That's very flattering and kind of you. Thank you very much for being here. And thank you for the 11 months also, that one redacted. Actually, you just gifted a sub to Rijin. Thank you. Am I including uh, the patches that followed Arum Reborn? So like the 2.1 through 2.5 patch? Yes, let's go ahead and include those as well. I think that's simplest. And that, well, simplest in that it kind of like condenses, contains all of the stuff that is in a Realm Reborn before we get to the next expansion. Uh, less simple in the fact that that adds a lot of very good music. <laughs> that we have to then figure out how to narrow down to 10. It's going to be a good time. And this is all very subjective and opinion-based. So, like, we're probably going to narrow down what is ultimately my favorite 10. But, uh... <laughs> fear not if your favorites are not in this. At the end of the day, my favorite 10 doesn't mean a whole lot. We're just using this as an excuse to appreciate some very, very good music in this game, which my playthrough sometimes gets to highlight a little bit, but it's usually getting talked over by me. So anyway, welcome to the stream. Who's ready to listen to some tunes? Derman's ready. Just hanging out. This is just in the basement, by the way, of our free company's house. I didn't even tell people I was, like, planning to do this. And they just already set up a dance floor for us. How cool is that? 
I assume this was for some other actual purpose. And this is just a bit of serendipity. Here, I'll move. I'll move uh, our boy up to, like, the actual stage here. Let's have the dance floor in the background. There we go. Not that a lot of this music is super great for dancing to, necessarily, but hey, just setting the mood, you know? <laughs> but no, this is the actual overlay we're going to be needing to uh, use here. Just so we can start actually tracking our music a bit. And let's go ahead and get started, because there's a lot... Even if we just go only with uh, <laughs> a Realm Reborn music and stuff that happens before Heaven's Word. That's still a lot of tracks. So we're not going to be listening to, to these like all the way through. We'd be here all day. We'll listen to them as long as we need to to decide whether they are... Like, we'll listen through and see which ones need to, should be contenders for the top 10. And then we'll have to start narrowing it down somehow. Best we can. <laughs> Hang on, what did that say? 12 months, eh? My, my, Earth really is full of streams. <laughs> it's very good. Oh, thank you, by the way, Ed is everywhere. For gifting a sub to two. Oh, okay. For gifting a sub. <laughs> Ed is everywhere. And thank you for the 12 months, Quasimoto. But then also, Rainbow Smite, gifting 10 subs. <laughs> Look at me trying to get started here and you disrupting with your incredible generosity. Thank you so much. All right. Some of these tracks I think we're going to be able to rule out pretty quickly, uh, but this first one's not one of them. Um, I'm putting these in mostly, more or less, in the order that the soundtracks put them. Uh, this track is called Torn from the Heavens, and it needs to be louder than this. This is already a really good one. And it's already giving us a very, like, good sense of what the lead composer for Final Fantasy XIV, uh, so, okay, what's his first name? Is it Masahiro? I feel like it's not. Uh, Masayoshi, Masayoshi Soken. My mistake, apologies. Masayoshi Soken uh, was not especially known uh, as a game composer prior to his work on Final Fantasy XIV when he basically, he was on the music team for the original 1.0 version of the game, which Nobuo Uematsu was the lead composer for. Uh, and Soken took over for Realm Reborn and onward. And Soken is a, like, turns out they had lightning in a bottle on that team. Oh, he also did some Mario Strikers music. That's cool. I didn't know that. I love that. But yes, some things you need to know about Soken. He loves rock, even though there are there is a lot of mostly orchestral music in 14. He loves rock and roll. Uh, and he loves his leitmotifs. He's one of those composers who loves to work with leitmotifs so frequently and just pepper them out throughout an entire expansion. And he gets just a lot of very good emotional punch out of that. In this track alone, you're hearing kind of some of the main themes from A Realm Reborn. You're hearing the prelude, the classic Final Fantasy theme. This feels like... So this musical theme is kind of used in a lot of random places. Uh, it is used for uh, fate boss battles, of all things. Uh, it's used for a couple of dungeon bosses, or, like, or trial bosses, rather, like the Hydra and the Chimera, I think. And then you just kind of run into it at various other places, some occasional duties and kind of generic fights. It's just sort of like a generic boss theme, like our fight theme they use in various places. But this, in a way, this almost feels like if A Realm Reborn has a main battle, boss battle theme, which most expansions kind of do, it feels like this would be it for A Realm Reborn to me. 
It's the only one that feels like it's actually using a Realm Reborn themes in it. Like this one that's playing lead right now. Just listen to that. And for those of you who have not been exposed to Final Fantasy XIV music, oh boy, we're just getting started. <laughs> it's just a taste. But yeah, I feel that Torn from the Heavens is easily a potential contender. So anything that's going to be a contender, we're just going to shift up to this uh, top 10 category up here and start narrowing it down. But let's move on to the next one in order. The Land Burns. Nope, that's... The, we're on shuffle. That's not helpful. The Land Burns. <laughs> Ooh, I'm torn. <laughs> Thank you, Division 10. Torn from the Heavens is apparently... It refers to the Warrior of Light as well, so it's kind of like our light motif. I like that. I didn't realize that, but that makes a lot of sense. So this one, the Land Burns is basically the standard, if you get into a fight with any enemy in the Thanalan area outside Volda, this is the music you'll hear. It's just generic battle music. Each of the starting area zones has their own version of this. And this is fine. I don't know that I would put this on a top 10 for a Realm Reborn though. There's something very NES or Super Nintendo about how this track starts. Very much so, yeah. No, like it, that sort of, uh, I don't know if it's technically like kind of an arpeggio, arpeggio type thing, but that sort of just escalating, like very much feels like how battles in final, old Final Fantasies kick off. This is solid. I don't know if I would put this in a top 10 though. We've got a lot of gold coming up later. So I'll just click and kind of like, uh, like darken these ones here a little bit that we're probably not going to go for. Next up, Hard to Miss. This will be a another sort of a boss theme you'll hear in various fates when there's like a large, a larger boss monster everyone has to fight. This is pretty good, actually. You never realized each of the regions of Realm Reborn had a different battle theme. I didn't really either until I was listening to the soundtrack. This is kind of why I wanted to do this. I want to, I wanted to, there's no way to really focus on and celebrate and highlight the uh, game's music in the story mode playthrough. So this is kind of where we can do that. It's pretty darn good, honestly. Yeah, you, you can you can hear the guitar in there doing some work. So I can <laughs> so I can already let some of that rock shine through. I think I don't know if this one's gonna ultimately make the top ten, but I feel like this one get, deserves a shot. We'll move it up there. By the way, y'all let me know how the relative volume of my voice to the music is. Uh, if I'm getting hard to hear over the music at any point, or vice versa, just let me know in chat. Also, if you happen to be in-game right now, feel free to come hang out with uh, Dermon down here in the Free Company house. Or heck, we can move the dance party anywhere in Eorzea, really. <laughs> but this seems a nice, easy spot. Audio good so far? Fantastic. Okay, let's move on to the next one, which you will not hear very often because nobody really does guild hests ever. Tenacity. Hey, you do sometimes? <laughs> this is pretty good though, actually. I like this.
That's what's... <laughs> that's what's so... tricky about ranking this sort of stuff. I feel like most any one of these pieces of music would be something that, if I were playing just any other RPG, would stand out to me as like, ooh, that's a nice battle theme. The fact <laughs> that there are so many of them in 14, like you... You have to raise your standard if there's any way you're going to narrow any of them out. You're pretty sure this one's used elsewhere because you've never done a guild test? It probably does get used in some other places. There's a lot of battle themes that may get pulled in for various duties or for, like, cutscenes where there's supposed to be kind of a battle or a fight of some sort going on, even if there's not technically a battle that you as the player take part in. Again, I don't think this one's going to stick around long term, but we'll keep it in as a contender for the time being. Let's move on now to The Land Breathes, which is the generic battle theme for the Lenosha area. Oh, uh, we got some background dancers gathering already. Phenomenal. <laughs> Welcome. I should get German dancing. What dance emotes keep perpetually going until just end? I guess it's the Hildebrand one. Fourteen players. What are some other good dance emotes that keep going perpetually? Bees knees. Do I have bees knees? Let's find out. I have bomb dance, which. Not quite right. Yeah, the Manderville dance, which is something. I suppose we also have... There we go. We'll go with that for the time being. Also, we'll change this to something more appropriate. There we go. Fixed. <laughs> but okay, this is solid, but I don't I think it's gonna get outclassed by a lot of other stuff down the line. Let us move on to another Guildhest battle theme, Brothers in Arms. Ooh, very piratey. Hey, thanks for the twelve months, Cap Steph Barnes. I forgot to mention how Sokin loves his vocals. Also true. Sokin loves a choir. He gets a lot of great use out of choirs and vocal work in his work for Final Fantasy XIV. It, like, the thing that amazes me is that in fourteen alone, Sokin has, and in sixteen now, like, for the longest time, Final Fantasy has had a lot of composers, but none of them, like, ever have developed a reputation anywhere near the original Nobuo Uematsu. And for good reason. Uematsu's work is, like, 
stellar, just incredible. I think over the course of 14, Soken has proved he is handily an equal. Like, he's got a different style, but easily a match for Uematsu in terms of talent and skill. It, like, Uematsu was the lead composer for the 1.0 version of this game, and I think Soken's stuff... Like, there's a lot of good stuff in Nobu's uh, work. We'll, we will actually hear some examples of it that stayed in the game post A Realm Reborn overhaul, but I think Soken's work beats out Oematsu's handily. This is pretty good. I, I Again, I don't think it's going to be a long-term stay in here, but let's let's hang on to it for now and move on to the Land Bend for the Black Shroud generic battles. It's kind of a very similar melody and themes, I think, in all of these The Land Blanks <laughs> tracks. I think it's just like slightly different instrumentation and arrangement between the Thandalin, Lenosha, and Black Shroud areas. A little bit more woodwind heavy in this one, which makes sense for the Gridania region. A little more soft and organic. Hang on a second. Hold on. I missed something very gracious. Some things have happened while I was not looking, Ramdom, and others. Let me hang on. Ramdom, I'll get to you. First of all, thank you for the 12 months, Ramdom. That was a little while ago, but it needs to be said. Thank you for the 12 months also, Verity Engineer, and Zorlock Dark Soul. A year of Playframe. Here's to another. Thank you for the two months, Font of Wisdom. Then, Ramdom, thank you for the 50 gifted subs. Are you kidding me? Are you kidding me? <laughs> Bonkers. That's extremely generous of you. Thank you so much. And thank you for being here. <laughs> Absolutely bonkers. I very much appreciate it. Thank you. But, uh, okay. I don't think this is going to make the top 10. I'll be honest. So let us move on to the music for the first dungeon on the list here for Sustasha. The first dungeon you'll end up doing as a new player of 14. And also one of the pieces of music that was in the original, uh, was in the original game. Uh, this is, this one was written for 1.0. I think Soken, uh, was the composer even then though. It sounds like Silken. There's a lot of, like, it wasn't until I was looking it all up to put this list together. I did not realize how much 1.0 music actually had gotten pulled forward into A Realm Reborn. Maybe not in its same context, but they found a use for a lot of it over time. Hey, thanks for the 12 months, Jaffa Tries. They only had 18 months to pull 2.0 together, after all. Yeah, that, that which makes a lot of sense. And it's bonkers how much new music 2.0 and the following patches have, given how quickly they had to pull it together and then start working on Heavensward. I'm still kind of amazed that they did write so much new music and throw out so much of the 1.0 stuff. But it does... I think A Realm Reborn does a much better job of establishing a musical identity for the game. And I think it fits a lot better, honestly, than a lot of Uematsu stuff did too, even though there are individual tracks from uh, Uematsu that are extremely good. 
This is okay. I don't feel like it's a top 10 contender, though. At least not compared to some of the stuff that we've got ahead. Let's go instead to the Tamtara Deepcroft. There's going to be a lot of dungeons for a little while here. Because there's a lot of dungeons in A Realm Reborn. Back to back. Slumber Disturbed. Much more low-key. And yes, this is just the normal mode, not the hard mode, which that music's probably in here too, in this list. It's a big list, I forget. It's a fitting theme for, like, this fits Temtara very well, as just, yeah, like you said, uh, Font of Wisdom for a Crypt, but it's also a little, like, unremarkable in that way. It doesn't stand out. Let's move on to the next one, A Fine Death. So this is sort of a generic mid-boss theme for A Realm Reborn. It's like the first couple of bosses you run into in any given dungeon, this is probably the, the fight theme you'll hear for it. I love the prelude motif being kind of baked into this one. And maybe it's just that I've heard this one so often in so many interchangeable battles, but I feel like... So, like, I'm very familiar with it, and yet I feel like there's a lot of other ones that are more memorable. This is solid. It's, it's interesting listening to A Realm Reborn stuff, because it, I feel like... Though A Realm Reborn is where I'll, like the musical identity of this game gets established, I feel like the sound of it gets refined a lot in Heaven's Word. Maybe just in how in like the mixing and production of how the uh, orchestra sounds. But yeah, I, th I think. I don't think a fine death would make a top 10 for me either. Let's see how the Copper Bell Mines do though with Below. I like the harp. I do like it. It's actually, it's got a little bit of that Hitoshi Sakamoto sound that you kind of hear from Final Fantasy XII. I could imagine this being in a Final Fantasy XII dungeon, actually. Solid, but... I think it's going to get beat potentially by Nemesis, the sort of like standard Realm Reborn final dungeon boss theme, the theme you'll hear when you get to whatever the last boss of any given dungeon.
was neat percussion. it gets more interesting from this point here where like a stronger melody starts surfacing you could put this in just about any final fantasy game and it would work okay that's kind of true which is i guess kind of both a point in its favor and against it depending on how you uh, look at it kind of rules, though. I like that final stretch a lot. That is definitely where it gets feels at its most, like, memorable and interesting. But there is a lot before then, so... <laughs> I feel like we can top this. Now let's get to our first, like, trial fight, a proper one, with the Ifrit boss theme of Primal Judgment. Oh boy, we're being threatened with a good time. I'm coming to the house to bring an entire Disney park with the fireworks for people there. Let's add some color to this dance party. <laughs> I like it. This one actually does kind of have a bit of a genericness to it as well. Just, I guess, not a strong melody carrying it. It definitely sounds like, okay, we're in the big dangerous fight now. But I feel like as we get further into the game, and especially in expansions, Final Fantasy XIV would find a way to have, okay, here's the big fight music, but that is also like has a lot of dramatic weight to it and a lot of, like, melodrama and also catchiness. Like, this feels very right for the... Like, the scale of the threat as it feels at that point in the game. But it's not the sort that, like, it's not the sort that I would make time, go out of my way to listen to outside of the context of the fight itself, right? Good, but I think better is coming. <laughs> so this is fun. Battle theme 1.x for a very different vibe. Which I believe is basically, it's an arrangement of the 
battle theme from Final Fantasy 2. With sort of like a rock swing chiptune rendition. That percussion is so fun. I feel like this has got to be a contender. And that brass. This one's got character. Okay, yeah. I feel like this one... I don't know if it'll win, win out, but I think this one deserves a spot. This is fun. But okay, moving on. We gotta go to Halatali. And I don't remember what the music to Halatali sounds like, which might be a good indication of what we're in for here. <laughs> Loving the fireworks back there. Y'all are doing great. I actually do kind of like the moodiness of this one. And this is an optional dungeon, which probably means it's going <laughs> to... A lot of us probably haven't heard it a whole ton. Ooh, I do like that piano, though. Thanks for the hydrate reminder. Good idea. I really like that piano part. That almost made me, that almost tempted me to put it in a, like, keep it as a contender, but I don't know. The rest of it doesn't quite stand out enough. I like the vibes of it, though. So here is A Thousand Screams. Uh, the theme for... Thousand Miles of Todorak, the dungeon. Feels right for a spider dungeon. Ooh, that violin lead is actually really nice too. Or maybe that's cello. I can't tell. Or viola. Couldn't tell you. That melody is quite nice, though. It's a very short piece, but actually, I like that. Yeah, that one's that one's got a chance. All right. Here is the first piece we've listened to that is from the Uematsu era. This one's uh, courtesy of Uematsu. Uh, with assistance from Tsutomu Narita. This was a 1.0 theme uh, that gets used for fights against uh, Sahagin. This is a little loud. Turn it down. Anytime there's a battle that involves the Sahagin tribe, you will often hear this theme. Do I want some fireworks? I'm good, thank you. I, Durbin's got some. I've just... Uh, can't operate the... Can't operate fireworks at the stream at the same time. <laughs> and yeah, this is the... This is the melody theme that you will hear in the Sapsa Spawning Grounds. The, uh... Sort of where the tribe quests for the Sahagin are. The Sahagin... The, like, the little batch of Sahagin who you kind of, like, work with and build a reputation with. Thanks for subscribing. Chobokobo, 17. And also for the 12 months, Shakaltrakronis. And the 12 months, Zephylos. Missed a few of you.
Oh, yes, here, I can scroll down a little bit for you here. I'll scroll around a bit as we go. I do like how melody-driven this one is, which makes total sense as, like, Nobuo Uematsu stuff tends to be way more melody-driven than, like, textural, right? Like, if you want a textural Final Fantasy composer, uh, Hamauzu, the uh, composer for Ten and uh, kind of the lead composer, or one of the lead composer folks for the Final Fantasy VII Remake. He does textural stuff a bunch. Whoa! Nice light show. <laughs> Look at this great dance party back here. I'm on the fence with this one. You know what? I'll put it in. I don't think it's going to stay, but I'll put it up there for now. Let's move down. Uh, from fear to fortitude is this one, and this one shows up in a bunch of places. So here it is. Ooh, yeah. I think there's a contender already. I like this one. This one also very much kind of has that pirate vibe, which makes sense because it's used in Sestasha hard mode, which is a very piratey dungeon. I think it also shows up in the Sunken Temple of Karn and Snowcloak, apparently. Hang on. Snowcloak dungeon mid-bosses. Also, you'll hear this a lot in various job quest battle, or like job quest battles, and also sometimes when, uh, <laughs> also sometimes uh, when Godbert Manderville is in pursuit of his son at very high speed. <laughs> or coming in to lay down, a, lay some smack down in an arena. You get a more deserty feel from this one. Yep, yep. I can I can hear that too. Yeah, this one definitely feels like a contender. It's got a good energy. fellow Things user. Yes, I'm using a Things, like, planner app, which you use mostly for, like, creating checklists and to-do lists for yourself. But it actually works quite well for this purpose. <laughs> this is solid. I like this. Yeah. Solid. Solid option. Let's go to Hawk Manor next. For spooky times. Yes, extremely Castlevania vibes on this one. I agree. Look at this dance party happening back here. <laughs> this organ and melancholy vocal are not dampening the mood in this <laughs> dance hall whatsoever. This fits the dungeon it's in extremely well. I don't know if it's, uh, what I would, I don't know if I'd put it in the top 10, though. Let's see how the music for Brave Phlox's long stop fares, though. I love me some gobbies. I love the sort of busy, busy 
activity vibe feel this one has. Sounds mischievous. Oh wow, we do have a Tataru back there, don't we? Heck of a light show you guys are putting on back there. <laughs> Yeah, this is not memorable. I love you some gobbies, and this sounds like a gobby dungeon for sure. But yeah, definitely not a top 10 contender, I don't think. Sunken Temple of Karn, then, perhaps. Solid vibe from the start. A little generic, though. We're like halfway through the track already. Nice mood, but yeah, this, this doesn't really seem like it's going anywhere. Sorry, Karn. Cutter's Cry, maybe? We're going through a lot of optional dungeons now. Say busy, busy activity again, but in a gobby, in a goblin voice this time. <laughs> oh, that's just... Busy, busy. Busy, busy activity. I guess I've had a lot of weird go goblin voices now that I think about it. Busy, busy activity. Like sometimes they're higher, sometimes they're lower and gravelly, sort of. Music's a little low for my voice now. It's kind of a lower energy track, or a lower volume track, rather. Yeah, not a lot going on with this either. Kind of feels like a lot of these later optional dungeons didn't get a whole lot of, like, musical attention. They just got something to put in the background. But now we're up to Titan. A five-phase collection of music. There are five pieces of music for the Titan fight, which... At this point in the game, you will burn through so fast that you will only hear the opening 10 seconds of each, but it's sort of like an escalating intensity. And a much more, like, grungy, rocky, like, rocky kind of sound makes total sense for Titan. I do kind of love the choice to have, like, it have a little bit of a garage rock sound where it's not super well produced, right? It's not super clean or ultra punchy in the ways, in the production of it. It's just sort of like a little bit of like cheaper garage band sort of sound, but uh, it kind of fits the vibe. And it is more memorable. I think this one's got, like, I think Weight of the Whisper has potential. Let's move to phase two of it then. Weight of his will. It's getting really good, like, this grungy intensity to it. This does have very Final Fantasy X vibes, you're right. Not really in that a lot of Final Fantasy X music sounds like this, but that one rock track from X, or maybe like one or two random little battle themes that kind of have this sort of grungy rock sound to it a bit. 
But yeah, like, so this one feels like it's looping a whole lot. It's because you're not going to be hearing this one for super long. Again, there's, it's not a super long fight you're going to be in, and it's got multiple phases and different music for each one. I like the energy of this one, but let's go a little further. Let's go a little further in. Let's see our way to the world. Building intensity. Ooh. Like in that bass and the percussion. Oh, thanks for the stretch reminder. A little bit ago. This is a lot of attention for one trial, you're right. It's it's a lot of music for one primal boss. A lot of them don't get this. A lot of them just kind of have like one or maybe two. I like the energy of this one. It's like it's repetitive because this is for a short, a short phase, but I like the energy. Let's move to the fourth stage of this fight, Heartless. This one's familiar. This is sort of like the... the brief, like, calm before the big finish, right? Yeah, I do. I I too like the contrast of this one. That it, we've had a lot of uh, upbeat, rocking stuff building up to this, and then now there's like a little bit of a lull before it goes to its final, to its uh, final big finish. Not a top ten contender independently, but here's the big finish and probably the most like, popular of the bunch, under the weight. which gets to actually be, like, a full track song. So there are vocals in here, but they're very distorted and very quiet. So they're really just kind of being used as another instrument. Just using the distortion on the voice to add texture. I kind of like that. That's a thing that, like, you can really hear that sort of use of quiet, like, vocals that are really mixed down and not super prominent in the, in the mix here especially but that's something that i that you hear a lot in soken's music like there's a lot of vocals but they're not super prominent in the mix they may not be loud enough that you can even really understand what they're saying but they are definitely adding a lot which i kind of like because it means that like they kind of do what they need to in the music whether they're in a language you understand or not which is kind of great I confess that this, like, this sort of really grungy garage rock sound is not one that appeals to me a ton. Like, there's not something that I'd really, I would not listen to this outside the game ever, really. But it does have a lot of character. Like, it re this really makes Titan stand out as an encounter. And what it achieves in the game is really cool. So I, I think, like, despite, like, my taste on this, I think I, it deserves the respect of at least going into this list for the time being. But all right. Let's leave primal fights for a second. Do some more general battles and dungeons and stuff. Let's go to Kurthus. Just the regular battle for Kurthus. Another land theme. The land breaks. I like the harpsichord with the starting sound there. That's 
very fitting for Ishgard. And yeah, just the same melody theme for battle, just with different instrumentation. I like that they'd already kind of established musical identity for Ishgard well before Heavensward. Like, Heavensward gets, brings way more out of it, but this feels very much in line with the direction Heavensward goes musically. This track itself, though, is fine. Like, in any other RPG, this would be a great battle theme. In 14, it's got a lot of uh, competition. <laughs> Let's go to the Stone Vigil. Oh, Realm Reborn has so much music in it. Partly because they just have so many, it has so many dungeons. Hey, thank you for the 12 months, Arda Matthew. I don't know if I uh, caught that before. It's got a good tension to it, but yeah. Not a lot to stand out. A lot of these dungeon themes, the further we get in, are only like a minute or so long. Partly because a lot of them are getting like the dungeon music is getting interrupted by battle themes because at this point in uh, 14 battle themes, very quickly they later on made it to where a dungeon has music that plays whether you're in a fight or not, just as you go through it. This early on, I think uh, dungeon themes got interrupted by battle music a lot more often. And that's probably why they're so short and also not especially memorable. Also probably not especially memorable because there's so darn many of them they really started focusing on, like, fewer but better with dungeons in later expansions. Anyway, next up, uh, Zamile Darkhold. It's got a good vibe. Snow Cloak is the first dungeon that has kind of like the mandatory music that doesn't get overridden. That feels right. It feels true, and also I can see why they made that choice. Why would you interrupt Snowcloak music with a battle theme? Are you kidding me? Whoa, look at all those carbuncles. <laughs> I just looked at the screen. Carbies. Yeah, okay, that one that one didn't have a whole lot going. Let's go to Aurum Vale instead. Those are words most people don't like to hear in any context, but maybe musically will be different. Nobody likes going to Arum Vale. It's an optional dungeon with a lot of poisony puddles. Uh, it's full of marbles. It's actually rather pretty. Like, I like Arum Vale fine, but it's also a place that it's easy to overextend and overpull and die, especially in that first room. With pickup groups, it's, it's easy to wipe there. And this music... Nice vibe, but nothing too remarkable. That's okay. It is time now for... This should be possibly a good one. 
Thunderer, which is sort of the theme for uh, a lot of Asians early on. La Habrea, Nabrealis, uh, Igeorm. This is the theme you will hear fighting them. So this one, I have a suspicion this one's going to be good. Love that thundering percussion. Oh, yeah. A great building menacing feeling to this one. Thanks for the 12 months, Alchemist 80. Thank you very much. one. I think this fits kind of like the early, especially given how paper thin Asians were as antagonists this early on. This sort of like conveys a larger menace to them that even the story and writing don't entirely pull off. I like that. Thunderer, I think, has got a shot. Yeah, yes, Susputer. We're going with only with the Realm Reborn themes today, in part because even if we just focus exclusively on only battle themes and only the ones that are in a Realm Reborn, that's still so many. <laughs> we'll get to the expansions later. We'll do ex we'll do a stream for other expansions later on. But now we're coming up to one now that I think is going to be a pretty a shoe in for at least being a contender. Uh, this is the boss theme for Garuda, and it's one that actually exists in the 1.0 version of the game, too. But here we go. This one does have a lot of nice character. It's got a very good build. And that, yeah, that drop shifting into just the rock out version of this theme, very good. I like the orchestra still has a presence in this, that it like, that the guitar and the rocking kind of drops out now and then to leave some space. A lot of the, like I'll be honest, a lot of the primal fight themes from A Realm Reborn are some of my kind of less favorite uh, of the primal battle uh, battle themes, just because I think the ones that come later on in later uh, expansions are just generally better across the board, or just more interesting across the board, and better and more like fitting and better capture the drama of the moment.
that like that's the thing. I think 1.0 has a lot of uh, primal fight themes that are like fun rock out anthems, but they're not necessarily capturing the narrative drama uh, and narrative stakes of the moment, and which I think some of the uh, later expansions pull off a bit better. Not all of them. But I do tend to favor, uh, on the whole, I tend to have fonder, like, memories and feelings about the boss themes that, like, bring in light motifs that you've been hearing th throughout the experience and kind of, like, are building up to a big climactic story moment more than the ones that just kind of shift into a, shift into just being kind of a rock song. Even though the rock songs are fun. But yeah, this is, this is a contender. Easy. Like, no question. I think it's the best. I like this one more than I like the Titan stuff. Now, we're going to go to Mordona next, and the, the land blanks tracks haven't had an amazing track record so far, but let's, let's see how this turns out. Quick check on parameters. Were we picking the top 10 battle themes or the top 10 themes and limiting to the battle themes? Important distinction as some themes might be great as a theme on its own, but not a good battle theme. We're, we're just focusing on the battle themes alone today, which basically means any theme you would hear in a battle context, whether it's a random battle in the world or a dungeon backing track or a uh, trial raid, that kind of thing. Because if we included just music for different areas and cutscenes and stuff like that, I feel like narrowing this down to 10 would be impossible. It's going to be hard enough as it is. <laughs> I kind of like this version. This one's got a little, a bit more bombast to it. I kind of like this version a little more than the other land uh, blanks battle themes. I still don't think it's a top 10 contender, but... I think I like this one better than a lot of the other ones before. Oh, is the question more that we're, whether we're rating them as battle music or just in general? I think in general. Like, I, I've not got ultra strict criteria for these. I've got my own just sort of subjective preferences and criteria here, but the discussion around them is more interesting than the final ranking in my mind. <laughs> You know what? I, this one's probably not gonna stay here long, but let's put it in here because I. This one has got a nice just scale to it. I like it. I don't remember the music to Pharaoh Sirius at all because I've barely been in there. Let's listen. Oh right. Pharaoh Sirius music rules, actually. I love that children's choir, or like, maybe it's just boys' choir. I, I don't have a good enough ear to tell, but... Yeah, there's like a lovely beauty to this, but a very haunted feeling one. In large part because of, yeah, like the kids' choir. Brings the beauty, but with everything else around it, it feels like it's surrounded by something much creepier. There's a lot of different choirs, actually, in this. Kind of like the solo... Female vocal, the men's chorus. Yeah, okay, this one rules. <laughs> Oh, 
Way to, way to beat the odds, Pharaoh Sirius. Yeah, that was great. <laughs> All right. Oh, this is going to be fun. Now for an abrupt shift in tone. It is time to do battle with Moogles. Perfect. Like... This is per I have no idea if I had to come up with what should a boss fight against a bunch of Moogles and their king sound like, I wouldn't know even where to begin. But going with the Nightmare Before Christmas, basically, is inspired. Easy contender. There's just so much distinct character to this. It's definitely a reference to the old Moogle theme. The, the melody being played is definitely the classic Final Fantasy Moogle leitmotif. That, uh... It's in a minor key this time, but... Because it's... Because it's scary, you see. <laughs> But there is also the second half of this fight, which is a subtle modification, mostly in that it involves vocals. So, um, let's, uh... I kind of like the non-vocal version a little bit better. Even though the silliness of this is pretty delightful. It really is just a nightmare before Christmas. <laughs> Are the vocals the same when playing the game in a different language? I think so. And that's part of why I sometimes wonder, like, if it's not intentional, this feels like a very, like, beneficial approach to Soken's habit of mixing vocals so low in uh, these tracks, is that, like, even if you don't know the lyrics, they're not the point. They are just an ad another instrument in the track. Which I kind of love. It de-emphasizes the vocals big time, even though they've clearly put thought into the vocals for all of these. It makes the music and the melody more prominent. Just for listening to, I enjoy the non-vocal... You know what? I'm gonna... Uh, I'll put it up here, but I personally, I like the non-vocal version more just as a piece of music for listening to, but I mean, I respect the silliness. Let's go to another optional dungeon. It's the Wanderer's Palace. A Tonberry dungeon. So Final Fantasy XIV music is always in just one language. Just, but, uh, not always in English, but always only recorded in one language. It's good to know. I was pretty sure that's how that was the case. Wasn't confident enough to say. There's a nice somberness to this that I like, which is appropriate, because I think the Tonberries in 14 have, like, kind of have a tragic origin as a species, as originally being Lalafell, I think, from kind of a past era. I 
I, like, I feel like I want a little bit more to that one. And we may get more to that. Like, it may be that a hard mode version of that dungeon gives us sort of another arrangement of that theme that brings a little bit more out. I'm tempted to put that one in, but I feel like I just want a little bit more from it. Okay. Next is a fell air falleth, which is apparently just sort of like a mid-level dungeon theme. Why did I write this? <laughs> this is just a generic, it's in a, it's just in the middle of, it's just some dungeons have this. Or is it like a, I think it must be. Let's hear. Oh, maybe like a mid-level dungeon battle theme. Yeah, 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 yeah. If you get into just like a fight. Whenever you get into a fight with enemies. <laughs> in some of these dungeon, in some of these sort of like mid-level range dungeons, this is what you'll hear instead of all these themes we've been listening to. It's an alternate of Foul Air Forceth. Both are dungeon themes. Oh, okay. I think this is in several, though, right? Like, because I feel like I hear this everywhere. This... <laughs> this is the anthem of the duty roulette, <laughs> basically. <laughs> That's what I feel like I always hear. <laughs> it's pretty good, though, honestly. I don't know if it's top 10 good, but it's pretty good. I don't think it's top 10 good, though. Let's go see about M to poor keep. Cracks in the wall. This one, I believe, is sort of a... It's a place that's just sort of been, like, corrupted by this sort of, like, poison mold stuff. It's been a long time since I was in here. Another optional dungeon, if you hadn't guessed. Oh, I do like this kind of piano-led... And this up-tempo piano-led sort of thing, despite being fairly sparse. Ooh, that's kind of neat. I like the vibe of this a lot. I don't think it's top 10, but like, what a neat vibe though. I like all the piano in that. Now for Skullduggery, which is the mid-boss theme for uh, Sunken Temple of Karn hard mode. Though I feel like I hear this as music in Mains in it like MSQ cutscenes all the time. Anytime there's like sort of a battle going on, I was like, oh no, enemies are here. Also in Hildebrand? Yep, yep, this definitely shows up in Hildebrand. Just whenever there's Skullduggery afoot, you know. <laughs> And it's pretty good. I feel like we're hitting a lot of tracks so far that are like varying levels of this is pretty good. I think as soon as we cross over into uh, more patch content stuff, uh, stuff released in 2.1, 2.2, stuff like that, and into the raids and all that, this is going to start getting a lot harder. <laughs> This was good, but it's. I think it's going to get outclassed pretty quickly. So this now we're gonna we got a little string of tracks from 1.0 originally, but you will hear them in A Realm Reborn in 
the final boss fights of your job quests, Breaking Boundaries. This was pretty good, I think. Yes, this is just top 10 Realm Reborn songs today. This was really good. This definitely has like drama to it. This this has like tragic battle all over it, sort of like it's all come to this, all is lost. That's a good way of putting it. The song has very I have to fight my own brother vibes. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, let's go listen to that. Yeah, I feel like this is this is a contender. This has got good drama to it. Alright. Now we're going to go to a hard mode dungeon, sort of a generic hard mode dungeon theme, but I don't know if this should count. I think it's when you're not in a fight. Like, I'm generally just counting dungeon music in general, for the most part. Yeah, I guess we'll count it. Like, the distinction between the two stops mattering after a Realm Reborn, anyway. It's real nice, though. So this is the music you would hear in some of the first post-release. Uh dungeons, the hard mode dungeons. This is pretty good. Good theme. I'm curious now, what does the the next track, A Dark Kiss, is, I think, like, when you get into a battle. So this will shift into this. Ooh, it's quite nice, too. So yeah, it'll basically crossfade between these two tracks when you're in and out of fights, which is something that they... It seemed like they were experimenting a lot with that in the Realm Reborn patches. These are pretty good. I think these both, like, should at least go in the maybe pile. I don't... I can't tell which one I like better between the two. Maybe slightly, slightly the first version, just because that... It's just got a really interesting tone. Sounds... sounds much more different. Okay, now we're into a really... This is where it's gonna get hard to start ruling stuff out, y'all, because we're about to enter the, uh... <laughs> we're about to start entering the Crystal Tower right now. So, um... Good luck. Labyrinth of the Ancients. Here we are. Which, if you're not familiar, is basically a lot of big orchestral renditions of Final Fantasy III music. And it's real good. Like, I'm sick to death of this raid, because you get cued into it so often. But the music, though...
It's so nice. I love the dynamic range in this, like, from how, like, the range from quiet to big over the course of this arrangement. such a good rendition of Final Fantasy 3 themes. Yeah, like, this is easy. I could see this being a top 10 winner. Piece of cake. Then there's Ever Upwards, which is basically the version that it crossfades into when you get into a fight, which is very, very briefly these days. <laughs> very brief interruptions to the first version. Ever Upwards. Which is also very good. It's almost fights take a little bit. Mostly because there's always somebody who's not standing on the circle. <laughs> it's gotta be somebody every run. this. I think I like the other version a little bit better because the melody's more prominent. This functions very well in-game, though. Wrong. This one will probably get bumped out, but we'll put it up. But now let's go to a boss fight in the Labyrinth of the Ancients. Yeah. Final Fantasy 3 boss music. music is great. And it translates to, like, big orchestra really well. Hey, thank you for the six months, Meets 33. This is really solid. I approve. But okay. This will be... Alright, these next two are going to be very interesting, everyone. The Emperor's Want is the theme for Castrum Meridianum. And after that is Penitus, which is the theme for the Praetorium. These are two pieces of music... ...that are... ...quite good, 
output that people have very good reason to be very sick of hearing if they play the game a lot. So let's, let's see. Castro Meridianum. Because of the way the game is set up with like how kind of party and <laughs> with how roulettes work, people who are playing this game regularly could easily be hearing one of these two for like a half hour every day. And that's enough, like, if you're not having a good time, that's enough to make you dislike any piece of music. But this is very fitting for that kind of, like, break into the Imperial Stronghold. But sneakily. Oh yeah, this is the music you'll hear if you just wander into a Castrums a lot of the time too, just out in the world. You don't have to be in the dungeon. This one's fine, but I don't think it's top 10 material. Yeah. The next one, though, I think might be, even though I've heard this one so much. I do like this part of the Castro Meridian theme, actually. It's not top 10 worthy, but I do like... I do like that rhythm. Okay, here we go. Praetorium. This is really good. Like, as a climactic dungeon run building up to the big fight. It's so dramatic and good. Such orchestration. This one's long too. We're not gonna listen to the whole thing, but it's like a nearly 15 minute piece of music. Which is good, because you're going to be in there for, like, 30 to 45 minutes easy. <laughs> if all the other little dungeons along the way had to be a minute each so that we could do... So that this one could be 15, I think that's a worthwhile trade-off. really good. Yeah, this one's an easy contender. Easily. But okay, now we gotta do the boss fight themes for Ritati and Livia and De Niro. And this was a 1.0 track. This is a Uematsu one, actually. Steel Reason.
Oh, is this the one that's going to get us copyright flagged? Oh, well. <laughs> well, it didn't happen to me in, uh... Well, I can't remember if it happened to me with the story mode series. If it happens, it happens. It's fine. Whatever. That's what Patreon's for, right? <laughs> Thanks for the hydrate reminder, by the way. I'm on the fence with this one. Especially with that guitar, there's there's like a cheesiness to this one that's kind of that's like kind of fun. There's much more of a like Uematsu stuff you can usually tell, especially in the battle themes, because there's definitely much more of a kind of cheesiness to some of the instrumentation he chooses and all that, but it's still got like a lot of character and like charm to it. And it definitely suits those. I don't know if it suits Rotatian and Livia. It definitely suits Nero. This feels very right for Nero. I'll put this one up in there as a maybe. It's got character. Next up, though, is the boss fight theme for Gaius Van Balesar. Bite of the Black Wolf. Another one a lot of us have been hearing for, like, too often in recent years, but <laughs> still pretty good. For whom do you fight? If they ever do go back and kind of overhaul A Realm Reborn more extensively with the current voice cast. I don't know if they're ever going to do that. But if they ever did, this would definitely be the character where you feel that difference very heavily, I think. I do like this one. I don't know if... I don't know if my top 10 like it, though. It's very fitting for the fight and the character. I think no for this one, just because, boy, we still got some stuff coming up, y'all. <laughs> uh, for example, we got the Ultima Weapon Fight Phase 1, the Maker's Ruin. Uh, this is really good. I feel like this is top 10 easy. Yeah, like, this is... If there is iconic A Realm Reborn theme of, like, triumphant let's go do it, let, let's go do the thing battle music, this is it. Yeah, this was this is an easy top ten. Almost definitely 
staying in the top 10 as well, candidate. As some of you all have been saying it already. This is, this is like a realm reborn.mp3. This is. <laughs> Extremely good. But then also, there's Ultima Phase 2, which is wildly different, but also, uh, rules? The build on this. Just going ahead and putting this up in the list. This is a piece of music that like comes back frequently too in later expansions. Both for harder versions of this fight, but also I think it shows up like as a motif in some later other boss fights too. Because it rules. Also like that like the percussion and sort of like the lower the bed that the uh, chorus is kind of like uh, singing over right now is like the music you'd have heard anytime you were dealing with like beast tribe uh, like antagonism over the course of a realm reborn anytime uh, the Sahagan started doing something that was gonna anything that was gonna lead to the summoning of a primal You would be hearing like this percussion and uh, some kind of like lighter orchestration, like kind of like a, a partial version of this is what you would hear. And now it feels like the full version with the chorus and everything for the fight itself of Ultima Weapon, which is all those primals and their power absorbed into one thing. What a build. It's fantastic. Yeah, easy contender. Uh, then there's the Odin battle theme, Corpse Hall, which I don't remember. because I don't fight Odin very often. A lot of folks, even who play 14, may not have encountered this one because it is optional and it does not appear in the roulettes because it's too hard. <laughs> it's harder than most of the other primal fights that you would do at around that level. This is pretty good, but I think a lot of the stuff we've been hearing beats it. 
But oh no, now we're getting into the Binding Coil of Bahamut Raid, uh, which has a whole ton of... It uses the answers kind of main theme light motif a whole lot, and boy, that's... Uh, that's going to be... A lot of these are going to be going in the contenders list, I think. Primal Timber. This is so good. Like, I don't actually like the Answers song that much in its original form. It's got a little bit too much of that kind of like ballad cheese that's just a bit too strong. Like, a, it's just a little bit too cheesy for me, like 5% too cheesy. But the way they use the melody in so many pieces of music in A Realm Reborn later on, I adore. Like that, that melody for answers is so potent that just hearing it anywhere, anywhere in the game, when that, when some part of the game uses answers, it is a big, important moment and you know it. So if you weren't ready for it to be a big, important moment and you hear that music, you are at full attention of like, what's going on? <laughs> what's about to happen? This bit that's coming up is so good. I love it. Like that lead piano and the texture, like the sort of synth texture happening underneath it's like, this is so good for the uh, theme music for this dungeon. It must have been so cool to have played 1.0 and then gone into the coils for the first time. I can't imagine, yeah. To have been present for the fall of Dalamud, that like the answers track was just integral to. Like the two events are just inextricable, and then have a whole dungeon that's about those events with that music playing. That had to be potent. It's very good. But then there's like the battle version that it would that it would crossfade into Spiral. Which is also good. I think I like Primal Timber slightly better, but I like this as well. Just kind of like more upbeat, more of the electronic uh, texture and drums. But the uh, like the main melody kind of takes a less prominent spot in this one. Like answers is a bit more understated. The texture's very good though. This feels very Final Fantasy XIII, actually. The strings, the drums, the electronic aspect. The orchestra, like the, this. Final Fantasy XIV music usually doesn't sound that similar to stuff you'd hear in XIII, but... drums, though. Whew.
you hear what I mean though? Like the piano is mixed much lower down for that main theme in this for the battle part. Which is which feels right in the dungeon itself. And I'll put it up in the list as a maybe, but I think the other version. It's just a little harder. Just slightly. Boy, it's close, though. But then there's the boss theme in the uh, coils. Oh, do they use this in some hunt fights as well? I like this, but I don't... It doesn't grab me as much as some of these others we've been hearing. It is very good, though. It's just got a lot of stiff competition. Doggone, there's so much music in a Realm Reborn. <laughs> it is good, but yeah, I don't think this is a contender. Leviathan fight, though. This is interesting. Leviathan's got a really interesting phase one to phase two. Very, very different phase one and two for Leviathan. I do kind of like the vibes of this, though. build is very good. I think it's a little too sparse, though. Like, it is very good in its context, but on its own, it's kind of all about building up to something that the, uh, that this piece of music on its own doesn't really have. This is sort of in service of the next one, which is very different through the Maelstrom. using that same sort of distorted voice approach as they use for Titan stuff. It's kind of what I was talking about, though, where, like, this is fun. Like, it really stands out because it suddenly goes from a lot of orchestral stuff to, like, really fully rocking out. But it doesn't say anything about, love, like, I feel like you could attach this to a lot of other primals and it would fit just fine. This does, nothing about this feels distinctly Leviathan to me, either as a primal or in how it, like, where it fits into the story as an encounter. I mean, it is literally saying Leviathan, but that feels like a cheat. 
<laughs> Fair point, though. It is literally Sega Leviathan. <laughs> I can't start. You got me there. <laughs> if this was playing for Shiva, but they kept saying Leviathan over and over, that'd be super weird. Odd choice, Soken. But all right. <laughs> hey, thanks for the seven months, Raven Day Dreaming. I feel like this doesn't... I enjoy rocking out, but I don't feel like this uh, is, like... Compared to some of the ones that have more, like, potency, like this Bahamut stuff that's pulling in the Answers theme, the stuff around Ultima, which sounds like a Realm Reborn.mp3 and stuff like that, like, they got so much more emotional heft. Even though this is a fun stretch of it here. But uh, let's go to the Lost City of Antipor. So I don't remember this one. Ooh. Much more serene. This one's Mold City? Oh, wait, did I call... I called another place Mold City before. I called Andapur Keep Mold City. Wait, what's Andapur Keep then? Oh, this... Oh, it's... Okay, Andapur Keep versus the Lost City of Andapur. Andapur Keep's the forgettable one. Oh, okay. <laughs> This is kind of great, though. I like this. It's got a real mood, some real identity to it. Like, you hear this and you feel like, oh, this is a... This is a... Sight of some tr past tragedy. It's really pretty. Yeah, I actually quite like this one. I'm going to see how it fares. Yeah, that's quite nice. All right, this next one, though, uh, is used for <laughs> some really specific cases. Used for mid-bosses in the Holebreaker Isle optional dungeon, and also in all the 2.2 story dungeons, it's used for mid-bosses in that too. Which is, boy, what a really specific place for these for this one to be. Persistence. Oh, okay. Yeah, this is familiar. I feel like this shows up in story duties from time to time as well. feel very Ishgardian. I feel like I heard this a lot in Kurthis and maybe in some Heavensward stuff. Even though it clearly was not originally written with, with that in mind. <laughs> or it was originally used elsewhere, rather. attention to it. Oh! This was jogging a memory, and I remember why now. This is a variation of a 1.0 bo boss theme that had a different stretch where it gets much more goofy in the middle. <laughs> much more Uematsu in the middle. And I think this is a variant of it that actually takes that goofy stretch out, which might also be why it feels a little bit more repetitive. Uh, I can't remember what the original theme was. But that is definitely a 1.0 piece of music that's been, like, 
had a chunk taken out of it. Interesting. Uh, let's go. All right. We've got the boss theme for the Diabolos, uh, Diabolos at the bottom of Lost City of Andapur. And this is a original 1.0 theme too, Wrath of the Icons. And I don't remember it. Yep, that's Diabolos, all right. Is this one in Dunska as well? It would make sense, given that Diabolos is the main boss of that too. Diabolus Phase 2 uses it. Okay, all right. That probably explains why it's more familiar, because I don't do Lost City of Amdapur much, but... Hearing... You probably hear this whenever Diabolus is on screen in cutscenes too, right? A lot of the time. For the, uh... For the, uh, City of Mock raids. It fits Diabolus really well, but I agree, it is, it is a little bit generic. Kind of the same problem that Ifrit's theme has. It feels big and dangerous and like, oh no, a demigod that wants destruction. And it works very well for that, but it's like, it doesn't have a lot. It doesn't really have a twist, right? It does feel more dangerous when you're looking at him, that's true. He looks very upset, Diablos. <laughs> All right, then let's go to the final boss of Brave Flox's Long Stop Hard Mode. And this is a 1.0 theme as well from Tsutomu Narita. Oh, it's, this was as well. The, this Diablos theme is also Tsutomu Narita. This sounds way more like 1.0 battle music. with the very, very prog rock goofiness that, to be fair, is Uematsu's jam. <laughs> Uematsu is clearly a... just exactly the prog rock kind of nerd. Which you can hear in all of his stuff, but like... Having not played 1.0, you were picturing a gobby tank for this music? Incredible guess. <laughs> you got it in one. <laughs> that is literally exactly what this boss fight is. <laughs> oh, you have played 2.0. Okay, that explains it. <laughs> I was going to say, wow. This is fun, but not not top ten material. I don't think. What is what is Halatali hard mode though? This is not. This is a Soken one. One that Soken did for 1.0 back in the day. Holotali hard mode is basically just, like, Holotali is kind of a Colosseum, kind of a Colosseum dungeon, basically. I don't think we're going to get much more than percussion in this one. <laughs> and it's good percussion, but it's 
Also very forgettable. But maybe by the time we get to the final boss of Halatali, which is also the Holebreaker Isle final boss and is also 1.0 music, another one from Tsutomu Narita. This is pretty fun. I think Dermot deserves a dancing break. He's been doing that for a long time. He will sit. Oh, this is the Kraken boss. Yeah, 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 yeah. This is fun. But I feel like I'd be... I feel like... It would feel weird for this to live in my top 10 for... Best of Realm Reborn boss fight themes, though. I feel. Not to my taste, I don't think. This next one, though... An arrangement of a Final Fantasy V incredible boss theme. Battle on the Big Bridge. Sokin did this arrangement, but props to Uematsu for this original composition because, man. And there's like a little silliness to this, too, which I like and is fully appropriate for the context of this fight as it shows up. In 14. Yeah, this is a contender, definitely. You know what? I gotta do a quick bio break real fast, so I'm gonna BRB, but I'm just gonna let you keep listening to this while I'm out. Give me two minutes, I'll be right back and we'll resume. Enjoy the jams and the BRB screen. Which is way more mellow looking than the music suggests, but that's okay. BRB everyone.
All right, I return. I am back. Thanks for that stretch reminder a while ago, though. Probable futures. But yes, this, definitely a contender. The next one, also quite possibly a contender. We're going into the second coil of Bahamut now, with blades. Very good, menacing vibes on this one indeed. Uh, which artist did the BRB artwork? Uh, that is Lillian Chen. Lillian Chen, a good friend and a very good artist. You may remember her as one of the uh, extra history artists back in the day. She made our BRB screen music and it's wonderful. I like this. It's kind of like, it's a different arrangement of the music you heard in uh, the first Binding Coil. A little bit more like sinister. More dangerous. Answers in there. I'm trying to decide whether I like this one or the kind of first coils rendition better. There's definitely a more like haunting, dangerous aspect to this version. I'm kind of torn. I, I think I like the first version a little better, but these are both very good. Boy, we gotta pick up the pace, huh? This next fight is the fight from uh, 1.0 where you fought Neil Von Darnis, uh, brought back in for the Bahamut raids. Tempest. It does feel very climactic. While also definitely sounding more like the 1.0 version. Like kind of how 1.0 sounds, which is appropriate in this case, right? It's kind of like when 1.0 goes for a rock sound, this is more uh, what 1.0 would sound like. I do like the Gravitas they're lending this, though. I don't think this is a top 10 one for me, but I do like... how important... this theme makes the fight sound. Oh, right, it just stops and does Final Fantasy X far plane stuff for a little bit. <laughs> Which is a choice. 
Oh, is this the meteor phase? <laughs> Appropriate fireworks going off back there. <laughs> That's a pretty cool return, though. This feels, it's all put in one piece of music, but this feels like it's got the same sort of like intent that the multi-phase Titan music had, right? Where just several different phases of music that are supposed to shift as the fight goes on. I feel like I'm going through multiple phases of a fight here, like dancing mad style. That synth though is <laughs> making it very hard to take anything seriously. <laughs> That is the one thing I, the one aspect of uh, kind of Uematsu proclivities and it's sort of like prog sound that sometimes does le lean into synths that sound a little bit more cheesy than cool for me. And this one's not an Uematsu track, but it's the, it's, uh, <laughs> it's Narita who was uh, working with Uematsu a lot on this, on 1.0 stuff. But yeah, this really sounds like a multi-phase, like, dancing mad style progression, though, which is cool. This sounds like a bunch of Final Fantasy VIII or IX boss battles, right? Like... I can, I can hear the extreme in this a little bit, right? From Final Fantasy IX? You know, I feel like if this game weren't so full of amazing boss music, in a lot of other games, this would be a shoe in for a top 10 spot. I don't think it's going to be one for me, but. Still pretty darn cool. This is still just phase one. <laughs> I expected this fight to go a long time. <laughs> Maybe in its day it did. Now it's going into jazz? What's happening? What? I don't know if I ever listened this far. <laughs> What an interesting track. And now it loops. Okay. Wow. And that's just phase one. Phase two is this, Rise of the White Raven. Which is... This sounds very... This is the same way that uh, Gaius' theme starts. I assume it goes somewhere different, though. This is a little different. It just kind of makes sense, actually, that Darnus and 
Belsar would have very similar vibes to their boss music. It's close enough to the Gaius battle theme that I would not want to put both of them in. And I think even Gaius' theme is not one that I'd probably want to put in the top 10, but it's like really distinct and it's fitting. Yeah, and, and the literal operaticness of it is very cool. Can you get more dramatic than literal opera for a boss theme? I don't know if you can. It's very cool. So Gaius, this is basically the non-opera version of the arrangement. That makes sense. Okay. Yeah, 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 yeah. All right. Let's go to Holebreaker Isle for what I am imagining is going to sound so different. Yep. <laughs> Horizon's Calling. This is the music they play for fishing a lot of times too, isn't it? <laughs> Ocean fishing, yeah. This is quite charming, honestly. Yeah, I, I think I agree, Kevlar. It's like, it's not as a battle theme, nothing, nothing amazing, but a very good like call to adventure theme. I agree. This feels very Final Fantasy 11. Did Narita work on 11? Hang on. Tsutomu Narita. He contributed to the last stories in Avoid Chronicles, uh, the Final Fantasy XV multiplayer game. Remember, remember that? <laughs> Grand Blue Fantasy versus. Interesting. Okay. No, no eleven though. Well, that's neat. Not top ten. Neat, but neat. Let's go to Tantara Deepcroft hard mode. I suspect this one's going to be more memorable than the not hard mode because Tantara hard mode is quite a different thing. Which multiplayer game? Aqua Hibiscus? Uh, the Final Fantasy 15 multiplayer game. There's a Final Fantasy 15 multiplayer game. <laughs> Can't imagine it's super active anymore, if it ever was. This is some good spooky. Good ominous vibes. Very, very good spooky dungeon. It's 
very ominous, but I don't think that this would be a top 10 in, under any circumstances. Now, here's my interesting one, though. The Ramu fight. Thunder rolls. I don't think this is one of my favorites either, but it's neat, though. I like the vibe of this one. Especially the start. What a cool vocal start. There's like a mellowness to this boss fight, which is pretty unusual for the early primal battles, which I quite like. Hey, thanks for the 12 months. Rubik Dark Will. We made it to a one year. Right? Really neat vibe. Yeah, I can hear that part of K. There is something near adjacent to this. But anything that where you have solo femme vocals... Like, it's very easy for that to start sounding near. But this one in particular does have a, like, very near adjacent vibe. Does this one have a late shift as well? It's a very long track. It's like 10 minutes. And I don't think I've ever been in the fight long enough for it to actually shift. <laughs> This is a really neat vibe. I'm skipping ahead a bit. I kind of want to hear where this actually like kind of goes. Hang on. It's kind of building, yeah. Yeah, it's neat how it, like, where it starts and what it builds to. It's really neat. Let's go to the next one, though. Rouse out. Ah. Front lines. <laughs> I think for me, this is this, these are the pieces of music that I probably otherwise like. I just... Hate front lines. <laughs> so it really puts the music at an unfair advantage, like disadvantage. Yeah, I skipped the war room. I think because uh, I don't know if I just didn't have it in this list or given it's just the intro. Of all the frontline stuff, though, Rouse Out I do, like, better. I like the sort of, like, 
looming, con like this is clearly sort of like the uh, fight could happen at any moment. The tension, the tension's nice. Once you get into kind of like the full rock out, which is what front lines sounds like 95% of the time. It's a good sound. I just, boy, front lines though. Like has a rock out theme. Solid. The problem is, if I'm ever hearing this music in game, I'm having a bad time. <laughs> and not like in a sans kind of way, where it's a a bad time that you're enjoying. No, just just a regular bad time. That's fine though, because now we're going to Circus Tower. For some more orchestral versions of Final Fantasy III tracks. There really is so much of Realm Reborn music, two cans of soda. Like these soundtracks are all big, but a Realm Reborn is extra large, easily like 30%. The number of battle themes in a Realm Reborn is easily 30% larger than any of the others, I think. This is really good though. In large part because Final Fantasy III music is really good. How are we going to narrow this down to just 10? Couldn't tell you. That's future us's problem, which we're getting pretty close to being because there's only so much music left. So this is the battle version in Circus Tower. This is the more ambient. Which I kind of like even better, honestly. It's really nice. I don't know if I like the... That sounds like a... Sound font. I don't think that's an actual live vocalist recording that. I may be wrong. But it's a really nice sound. Like the... The track itself, though. A really re nice rendition of another classic theme. Now this is interesting. Next up is going to be Pharaoh Sirius again, and I think it's the hard mode version of Pharaoh Sirius. Ooh, there's more to this than I remember there being. It's quite good. But yeah, I think this next one is Pharaoh Sirius hard mode. A light in the storm. Ah, yes. Back to the children's chorus, sort of spooky. Oh, is Ferris Serious Hard a, a uh, Heaven's Word dungeon? Maybe this is just another part of Ferris Serious then. I don't know why it's in here twice as a. Like, these are slightly different, like, arrangements. 
This is definitely like a track that's on the soundtrack release for the A Realm Reborn patches, though. Hmm. I'm gonna do some quick Googling, because I'm curious now. Oh, this is like an anniversary version of the Pharaoh series theme. So maybe it's just like a different arrangement. Maybe it doesn't appear in game, actually. Hmm. You know what? We already had a version. We'll, we'll rule this one out, even though it's good. But we already basically had a very similar version of this elsewhere. Let's go to Sestasha hard mode instead. It's pirates, baby. Putting the R in R. <laughs> it's true. This is pretty good, honestly. I've, I've heard enough other Realm Reborn music now that I know it's not going to stay in the top 10, so I'm not going to put it up there, but if I heard this near the beginning of the stream... I'd have been putting this in a temporary spot, knowing it was probably going to get booted. This is pretty good, though. The next one is the hard mode for Sunken Temple of Karn, and I have no memory of this place. Good sinister vibes, though. Oh, the mummy boss, right. Okay. Some really nice vibes. I love that harp. And yeah, we are getting, like, the further we get into these patches, boy, we're getting into some real nice stuff. It's got some neat character to it. I, I like it. This feels like the soundtrack to a sort of scary, but not really like... Like, a sort of scary kids' adventure movie sort of thing, right? Like a movie that's sort of scary, but, Ro but also like Robin Williams is in it. <laughs> You know what I mean? <laughs> J Jumanji energy, yeah. <laughs> I don't remember what the Jumanji soundtrack is like, but it's got some of that kind of like tone.
Disney scary. Yeah, yeah. Good way to put it. I don't think it's a top 10, but it, this is quite good, actually. For a dungeon I can't have done more than, like, two or three times ever. It's so much more interesting than so many of these optional dungeons have been up to this point. This sounds so film score. Yeah. All right. We're going to go to Snowcloak now, but not the one you're thinking of. It's the final boss of Snowcloak, who is borrowing a 1.0 battle theme called Penenza Loft. And a pretty good recycling, honestly. This one is, yeah, I agree. This one is very fine. This does show up in solo duties as well. You're right. Yeah. This one is fine. Although maybe it's slightly elevated by just being the climax to one of the most distinct dungeon themes this game has ever had, and a definite top 10 winner. Here it is. Hey, thanks for the 12 months, Smug Rainbow Pony. Hello. It's been a full year. I know. It is just so peaceful. It's very relaxing. Maybe too relaxing for a dungeon, but I don't mind. It's also very, like, there is a little bit of, like, dynamic kind of, like, uh, up and down to this. But it is also very repetitive, which is part of what kind of, like, makes it so serene and fall asleep to. <laughs> right? Like, some, uh, some light chorus comes in a little bit later. But it is mostly just a very peaceful, repeating, chill sound. And I really like it. Very good for an ice cave dungeon. And y'all are right, like, not every dungeon has to have the same vibe to it. It doesn't always have to be upbeat and battle sounding. And I think that's what makes this one stand out so much. It sounds so different from all the other dungeons you've done to this point that it, like, just. It's just like it. just kind of shocks you <laughs> into a chill vibe and it's so peaceful and relaxing it's very memorable that way it's very soothing it hasn't even looped yet it's just it's a very kind of minimal simple composition. Yeah, this is an easy top 10 candidate. No question.
But boy, we are getting into a run of some really good stuff, though. <laughs> There's not a lot left, but a lot of what's left is all hits, guys. <laughs> Well, let's go ahead and move on to them. Uh, first phase one of Shiva battle. Footsteps in the snow. I quite like this. Thunder, your hot take is you like this more than the phase two Oblivion. I actually agree. It's a really nice thump to that kick drum. There's, there's like a, an ominous beauty to this one, which feels so right for Shiva as a fight. Like a really, really light synth kind of arpeggiating pads. Or it's not even arpeggiating. I can't think of the right term for it. Just a very subtle pad synth pattern, rhythmic pattern layered under some of this that creeps up to the surface every now and then, and I really like it. It's really good, though. I do really appreciate though that like, even though I like this phase better than the second phase music, I do love that it is like the same melody that these two are working with, even though they sound so very different. This is so much neat variation just from section to section of this piece I like. Then okay. Now it's time for phase two. Everyone gets frozen. I like this one as, like, this is like sort of like a really bold flavor choice, right? And it commits completely to it, and I really like that element of it. Like, the music itself, I like the orchestral uh, ver version of it more in the moment for, like, the tone of the fight and the uh, kind of the context, the way it fits in. 
But it's just like a really strong, distinct choice. I like this. And something, yeah, something about the sort of like more punk vocal sound, though it doesn't match like it's it doesn't match Isel in a literal way, but in a sort of like uh, metaphorical way for what Isel represents in the story. Absolutely. Like punk rock for a revolutionary. Yeah. It's not one of my 10 favorites, but it deserves to at least sit up here for at least a little while. Just out of respect. This next one, though, I think might actually be a top 10 and stay there. Because next is the battle against Phoenix at the end, uh, or near the end of the coils of Bahamut, and this is also a very good vibe. Like, man, answers in scary organ rendition? Hmm. Especially once the piano and the kind of percussion kick in a little bit. I like that this one never... I like that this one never gets big and bombastic. This one just stays low and ominous. It's like there's nothing celebratory feeling about the fight, right? It shouldn't be, it shouldn't be a party. little bells in there. That's all so good. Right. Even in the <laughs> even in the worst existing stretch of the game, A Realm Reborn, there's so much killer music. It's amazing. Has Dermot done the rising quest yet? Yeah, I think I did like quickly run Dermot through the rising thing. Not recorded, but just to every now and then when event quests come up, I try to remember to run through Dermot through them real quick just to get the whatever items they come with. All right, let's go to M to pour hard mode. And this I'm excited to hear because this arrangement is by Ken Ito. Ken Ito is a uh, composer who was pulled in to help a little bit in kind of the late patches and did a lot of work in Heaven's Word. And I, almost across the board, adore Ken's stuff. Ken hasn't done anything for 14 since Heaven's Word, but some of Ken's stuff is my, like, Ken does almost all of my favorite pieces in Heaven's Word, arrangements-wise.
This one's just kind of like a neat spooky sound. Did I mean the worst stretch of a rum reborn or that a rum reborn is the worst stretch of the game? Uh, the, the latter, that a rum reborn is the worst stretch of 14. Uh, just as an experience. It's the thing you kind of have to get through to get to where the game starts firing on all cylinders, even though there's lots of good stuff in a rum reborn. Nice ominous energy. And I like the bells or whatever that little tone is now and then. Not a top 10 contender, but I like the good vibe. I think Ken also did the next one, Wanderer's Palace hard mode. Tricksome. Okay, yep. I think that Ken is especially good at with his arrangements is that he makes stuff sound big, which pays off so well in Heaven's Word, where there's like a story that's dealing with dragons. This is really good. Yeah, this is great. I love this, actually. What a cool sound. Okay, uh, let's do the next one. The Tug of Fate. What is this one? It's Wanderer's Palace hard mode boss theme, and it's also a 1.0 track. One of Sokin's 1.0 tracks. Oh, yeah. I remember this. Where else have they used this? I've heard this elsewhere. They get used in some fates. Yeah, that's where I hear it sometimes. Okay, and solo duty. Yeah, 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 yeah. That's right, okay. Oh, did they use this for like the last stretch of Steps of Faith as well? That would fit. Like if the dragon's getting too close to the uh, last thing. Like this. This is like it's 1.0 era, but even then, you can you can hear Soken bringing his sound. All right, so now we're to the last stretch of the Crystal Tower raid, the World of Darkness. Blinds to the dark. Everything toward the end of these patches is so good. It is really bringing so much out of the 8-bit compositions Uematsu did for 3 back in the day.
This has also been used in the MSQ ever since, like, uh, since then, which makes sense, like, kind of having the world of darkness and the void, like, that, that remains plenty relevant to the main story in lots of places. It's cool of them to reuse raid themes that have narrative relevance like that. I like it. So that's the sort of ambient version. Then the battle version is uh, Hamartomania. Ooh, yeah. We're a team of heroes off to do the thing. Or were Kevin McAllister starting to booby trap his house? <laughs> One of the two. Nice percussion, yeah. This would be a top 10 contender in any other game, but after all the competition we've been hearing, it's, it's very busy up here. There's a lot of stuff that needs to get pulled out if we're narrowing this down to 10. So we're just gonna go right to the Cloud of Darkness battle. Another Final Fantasy 3 final boss theme. And this is actually just the introduction to it, which is from the original three as well, and mm, very good. We'll kind of lump these two together, Hunger and the Reach of Darkness, because what a start. And then... Great choice making that, making it, choosing a violin for this lead. the inside the belly version of the uh, of the uh, previous stuff. I don't know if they actually put that on the soundtrack anywhere. Yeah, I'm just working with whatever they've released on the official soundtracks. Very good. But I don't like it as much as the one we're about to do next. Maybe one of my, this might be my favorite boss theme in Our Realm Reborn. I adore, like the Steps of the Faith is not a good fight, <laughs> but this uh, theme rules. Faith in her fury is amazing. Like, as something to score under, hold off, hold back the army of dragons.
This is incredible. Yeah, this is this is like shoe in for top ten for me, easy. Yeah, those high plinks evoking ice crystals in winter, or or even just flight. The feeling of like the because the dragons aren't just big, huge, hulking things; they're also like flying so that, and it happens up on a bridge way up in the air. Like this captures every single part, aspect, and element of this battle in such a good way. <laughs> it makes the battle better. With worse music, that fight would be miserable. <laughs> I guess it's pretty different now. I've not actually experienced it since it got turned into a solo duty. I'm sure it's way better now. There's also a phase two to it, which I don't hear a whole lot called Unworthy. Let's hear it now. This definitely captures the panic <laughs> of the moment. It's appropriate. It's like, oh no, the dragons are almost through. It's fitting, but I would I would choose Faith in Her Fury to listen to over this any day. We're down to the last two, and they're both really good. Spoilers. <laughs> Keeper of the Lake. Another Ken Ito piece. current songs have scrolled off the bottom of the screen. That's okay. We're down to the last two down here anyway, so there'll just be fun surprises. Okay, like, this is the sound that Ito often uh, brings with a hit, like the pieces that he did for Heaven's Word, and it's mm, very good. I'm sad Ito doesn't do stuff for 14 anymore. So many of my favorite Heaven's Word tracks were arranged by him. I think the melodies, like the themes that Ito's working with are ones that uh, Soken wrote, but his arrangements are great. Percussion's so good. The kind of like orchestral bed they've got going here feels really big. The chorus, the strings, like, hmm. Just feels very dramatic. In a way that suits Heavensward and pre-Heavensward stuff very well. Have we hit Battle on the Bridge yet? We did. That one's in. That's a contender. That one's in the rankings for top 10. Now let's get to the final piece of music for A Realm Reborn, after which I'm going to tease another track that Ito did in Heaven's Word, just so y'all can hear some of the gold that he does later. But first, the uh, Midgard Stormer boss fight, Primogenitor. Which gets so much use in this game. <laughs>
It is wonderfully otherworldly. That's a good way to put it. It's otherworldly. It's... It sounds important, but also just kind of sad. Which is fitting. You're right, Snow Wraith. It's like it's an un, it's a very unbattle like track, which is in a way is what makes it feel so just like remarkable when like it doesn't sound like battle when you listen to it on its own, but when you hear this and you're in the middle of a fight, it makes that fight hit very differently. If you get thrown into a big climactic fight against something and this is what you're hearing, you know, like, you feel like something, you're in the middle of something very important right now. It's just beautiful. piano go it's very very good now we're through all the realm reborn stuff and we're going to start narrowing the list down in a minute here but just as a teaser for getting into heaven's word if you want to hear why i'm a very big fan of ken ito Listen to this boss theme. This is one of the best in the entire game, every expansion, no, hands down. Like, listen to how big this gets as it goes. It just builds and builds and builds, and it starts big. It's like climactic battle track. <laughs> like the definitive one. <laughs> Listen to that. Like, he's pulled in so many of Heaven's Word leitmotifs in this in such a great way. Stuff from... that we've been hearing in Ishgard, stuff we've been hearing every time we deal with dragons. It's just, hmm. So listen to that percussion, too. So good. Uh, it's not like 14 music stopped being good when Ito stopped contributing, but man, I wish we, they still had Ito on the team. Because that stuff's incredible. Anyway, all right, all right, all right, all right, all right. Heaven's Word has to wait. We'll get to you someday, Heaven's Word. <laughs> no, we need to start narrowing things down a little bit. Now we have to do the hard part. We've had our fun. <laughs> 
But now the hard part, because we have to narrow stuff. So we'll, so we'll real quick, let's start seeing if we can make some uh, easier cuts. I think Torn from the Heavens needs to stay. Because this is a pretty, like, iconic a Realm Reborn piece. It needs to stay for now anyway. I think Hard to Miss can go. Well, hmm. It's pretty good, though. What about Tenacity? Gosh, there's so much darn good music in this. This is gonna be hard. Brothers in Arms? You know what, I think it, what'll be easier rather than going through the list and trying to find ones to pull out. Here, we'll be smarter about this. We'll start pulling in. We'll start pulling up, rather. Some of the ones that we know are very likely to stay in here. Start putting them near the top. Because then... bringing any of these others up have to they have to unseat something and that makes it a little easier to start making the choice <laughs> uh let's see maker's ruin almost definitely ultima very likely Primal Timber, probably. Hmm. Primogenitor, very possibly. Boy, this is hard, huh? <laughs> I don't feel like this is going to get any easier as we get to other expansions. <laughs> um, Hubris has a good shot. Battle on the bri big bridge has a good shot. Thunderer has a shot. Fallen Angel definitely has a shot. Ruther Gloom kind of does too, actually. Seven Jesters. For Penitus, maybe. Hmm. Shattered, possibly. From the Ashes, for sure. The Warrens, yeah. Boy, this is challenging. <laughs> I totally blame you for getting me hooked on 14. Thank you. <laughs> You're welcome. I'm very, very glad I've managed to get more people hooked on a very, very good thing. It's bonkers how much good stuff we're having to choose between here. Yeah, before we even get to any expansions, which all add so much additional gold. <laughs> Even just bringing a bunch of these up, we're already well past 10, so, like... Some of the ones we have up in the top running right now. Lost my place. Faith in your fury, which feels like... That's kind of a definite locked in for me. Here, to even make it easier, ones that feel completely locked in, I'll place above this little row for now, just because that's easier. 
just to keep them solidly locked in there. Uh, the Maker's Ruin. Yeah. Yeah. This is good and gets so much use. This is like really iconic A Realm Reborn music right here. Ultima? Probably? I'm not going to lock it in yet, but it's probably. It's real good. The Warrens? I mean, yeah. <laughs> From the Ashes, the Phoenix boss theme. It, it uses answers, which is unfair, but also. <laughs> Kind of the same for Primal Timber. Like. That's pretty incredible. Hubris is another one that I might lock in. Hubris is really good. <laughs> we probably do have enough renditions of answers in 14 at this point that you could make a top 10 list out of that too and still leave some out. <laughs> well, let's hear to Hubris again. That's the uh, Labyrinth of the Ancients. Yeah. Man. A spectacular. Whatever the Nero fight music is, is good stuff. I agree. That one's Steel Reason, I think. Yeah. I don't think that one's going to go in my top 10. Lart, like, even though I do like it and it does. It's distinct. It in part because of that kind of like 1.0 rock flavor. But for Nero, it feels very right. I think I can safely knock that one out of my top 10. But as I said at the beginning of all this, like, the ones I ultimately settle on as the ten, final 10, much less important than the fun we had listening to them on the way, frankly, as far as I'm concerned. Let me hear Thunderer again. Oh, yeah. I don't know if I can lock it in, but man, like the ones that are all kind of living up here just at the very top, not quite locked, is a. Uh, there's so much good stuff up here that's real hard to. Uh, real hard to not just put it up there.
I wasn't originally thinking Primogenitor was going to be in my top set, but it might. That's That really is like the... Especially when hearing kind of all of these beside each other. This really does, like... Its distinctness stands out even more. Definitely way up there. I think that has to be in there, honestly. It's too good. definitely a lot of these that are very good, but there's no way that they're edging out over <laughs> some of the competition. The competition is fierce. Yeah, like hard to miss good but I don't think that I would that it can possibly hold up to what it's having to beat to actually earn a spot up here same with tenacity I really like tenacity but can't top a lot of this other stuff. Brothers in Arms is good, but I don't... Mm. I like the coral stuff it gets to later. Okay. It is very good, but I think a lot of other tracks kind of capture a similar energy later on. Battle Team 1.x2. Like, it could be up here in the maybes, but... The competition, though. Hey, thanks for the 12 months, Snackerfin. Thanks for joining. I'll be honest, I don't think... Much as I love the distinctness of it, I don't think any of the Titan stuff... I don't think any of the Titan stuff is something that I would put in the top 10. It's, like, really distinct and fun, but as, like... As pieces of music in A Realm Reborn go that... are just, like, fun to listen to and bring the dramatic heft of whatever their moment is... I think there's a lot of other big fights that achieve bit more with that. Even other ones that kind of rock out more. Like I think I think Shiva's 
rock out like Oblivion, which is also not one that I put in my top ten, but I think it like does more in that in that realm. I don't think I would include Good King Muggle Mog. Like, if anything, I would include the non vocal version, Seven Jesters. Even that I don't think is gonna is gonna hang in there. <laughs> Hello, Night Valian. Welcome. Hey, and thanks for the nine months. No, seven months, sorry, Nismith. Nine months, King Carnage. Thank you both. Imagine this is a Final Fantasy 16. <laughs> Final Fantasy 16 Titan fight. <laughs> That would be an interesting vibe. Yeah, the land bleeds definitely not staying in here. Uh, what is breaking boundaries again? I think that one's got a nice dramatic feel. I don't know. If... It's very dramatic. That's right. Hmm. Very good, but there's no way it's beating out 10 of these others. There's no way. I think the same is true of Dark Embrace and Dark Kiss. Like, neat, distinct sound. And this one's an Uematsu. Uematsu composition. The battle version is Soken. But yeah, there's no way. There's no way these two are ending out top 10. I like Ever Upwards, but I think I like the hubris, like, uh, rendition slightly more. It's a tumbling down one more time. Hmm. It is good, but... Hey, Goofy. Thank you very much. Chobokobo, 17. For the five gifted subs, that's very kind of you. Thank you for joining me for this silly, indulgent thing. This has been very fun to do, just listening through 14 music. And thanks for the 10 months, that guy. 777. Look at y'all hype training again. Are you kidding? Goopers. <laughs> I don't think Tumbling Down is going to end up in the top 10. I also don't think that... Was it Spiral? I love Spiral, but I think... I think the Primal Timber... I like the Primal Timber rendition slightly better. Cars of battle. Hmm. That is very good, though. Uh, I think battle drums can go. Or Sahagin fights. Yeah, that's not staying. Uh, probably also from Fear to Fortitude. Let me find that one again. Where'd I put it in the silly list? Or in the playlist, rather. There you are. Oh, yeah. <laughs> Roll up trains, Conductor Prince. <laughs> Thank you, Naruhudi. 
It's it's funny, like you go into a Realm Reborn thinking it's going to be the easiest of all of the stretches of 14 to actually narrow down 10 favorites, but no. That's a maybe contender. A probably not, but a maybe. Out of the labyrinth. Hmm. I like it, but I don't know if it's like there's other Crystal Tower themes that I like a little bit better, I think. This is so good, but yeah. phase one of... Hey, Ramdom. Ramdom, you already did a lot of gifting today. <laughs> but thank you. It's very kind of you. Thank you for the five gift subs. <laughs> yeah, this first phase of Shiva is still really good. That's your tricksome again. Yeah, no, this one's actually Ken Ito bringing the very early heat and really good. Narrowing down 10 is going to be murder. We're going to do it, though. Let's hear Blind to the Dark one more time. I love both of these, but I don't think... Yeah. I do love both of these pieces, Blind to the Dark and the boss theme, The Reach of Darkness, but I think... A lot, like, on the one hand, a lot of what makes a lot of the Crystal Tower music so great is that it's pulling from a lot of already great pieces of compositions and rearranging them, right? Like, it's a lot of Final Fantasy III music. And I don't think that that disqualifies it or anything. Some of the Crystal Tower stuff is still very much in my shortlist here, like with uh, Hubris. But... Ultimately, like, if I'm kind of teetering on the edge, I feel like something that is just a rendition of past good music makes it a little bit easier to drop off the list. I like Silver Tears for the uh, Keeper of the Lake, but... It's very good, but Ito's going to bring way more heat in Heaven's Word. We can safely, we can safely leave this one behind. What was the verdict on tenacity? I feel like it's surprisingly good for the context it's in. I agree. Like, I haven't been able to bring myself to, I don't think I uh, could bring myself to remove tenacity yet. Where is it in here? Or did I remove it? Did I end up a... Uh... Yeah, I think I did remove that, even though, like, it's... It was a real hard one to drop. Because tenacity, tenacity is, like... 
just for it's for guild hests, which again, no one does, but it's really good. It's good, but Yeah. Uh I think if Primal Timber is in there at the top 10, then From the Ashes can go. They are both from a similar, pulling from the similar core of using answers, though, with a very different resulting vibe. Like, there's a, there's a lot of Coil of Bahamut music that I've, or pieces that I've been comfortable dropping because we have these two here already. And one of them should definitely be in. I don't know. If, I haven't decided for sure if both of them should. I might be comfortable dropping battle on the big bridge as well, shockingly. Like, it's really fun, but we've had, also had a lot of renditions of this over Final Fantasy history. And I think what makes this so fun is mostly the source material, as opposed to the this particular arrangement being like a especially remarkable version of it. Battle on the Big Bridge is just such a darn good piece of music, even in its original 16-bit form. Like, good luck finding a version of Battle on the Big Bridge that's not fun. <laughs> Fallen Angel again. It is really good. I don't know if it'll make this top 10, but it is very good. I don't know how well Thunderer is going to be able to hold out. Even though it is so good. Like, they're all so good at this point. Everything that remains still highlighted in this list here remains so good. But yeah, we can only really pick five more out of this list here. One of which is Ultima, which... 
like it's such an impressive piece that has been that continues to live through it most every expansion in some way There is something also, too, I feel like I'm waiting slightly more heavily in my mind. The tracks which feel, like, especially distinct as a Realm Reborn things, right? Like, it's one of the things that makes me slightly less likely to include Hubris, ultimately, because Crystal Tower stuff is good, but, like, Ultima as a... That is a core Realm Reborn piece of music, right? It's not an optional dungeon. It's not a side thing that has happened to come out in Realm Reborn. It is... In, a, in key moments of Realm Reborn, the experience, which kind of gives it a little bit more weight, I feel like. And yeah, that's kind of what I think, like, I would have dropped Thunderer if it wasn't for that, I think. Thunderer is just so... Like key to Realm Reborn and enough so that it sticks around like it's what gets pulled in for the Igeorm fight in Heavensward as well. Seven Gestures is super fun, but it is basically Welcome to Halloween Town. <laughs> Which is not really a huge strike against... Like, that doesn't make me like it any less. But if I'm having to come up with reasons to cut stuff out here... <laughs> very difficult to find good reasons to do so. Let's repent at this again. As if we haven't heard Penitus enough times. <laughs> I agree, Tryon. It, we're definitely at the point where picking things is, like, impossible. These are all very good. You can almost have to start getting arbitrary. I've, actually, you know what? That actually seals it. Waliard, I think you've actually just made a point that I think kind of tips me over the edge on it. Penitus should be... Penitus should be what the... <laughs> what the PvP music is. Like, I should... I should be hating to hear it any more than I already have. And yet it is so good that despite the fact that, like, <laughs> I don't ever want to have to go through Praetorium again, this music is really strong and good enough that I still... still think it's extremely good and just deeply kind of interwoven in the Realm Reborn experience. I think it deserves a place <laughs> as sort of the underdog hanging onto that list.
We got six locked in now. Let's go through the gloom again. This was just so distinct, like... You may never do this dungeon, and if you do, you'll probably only do it once or twice, maybe. But what an interesting, distinct sound. It sounds more important than the dungeon is. It's kind of like a few of these little sneaky ones like that, like uh, footsteps, no, not footsteps, uh, scars of battle, fear to fortitude. No, not that one. That one is very good. And I didn't feel any better about kicking it out, but the lineup, like scars of battle is. It has this really lovely somberness to it that I quite like. It's very good, but I think I would... It doesn't feel right kicking out a lot of these other ones to, for that one to come out on top. Fear to Fortitude, which is used for a lot of things, not least of which Godbert Manderville entering the chat. <laughs> Yeah, they use this for a lot. Like the level 30 class quests, uh, Sestasha hard mode, uh, Sunken Temple of Karn and Snowcloak, bosses. Uh, yeah, it shows up in a lot of places. It shows up in some Stormblood stuff too. Like there's one of those that they pull back in for uh, duty fights a lot. Which maybe is kind of like a point in its favor. It is a piece of battle like music for a realm reborn that is kind of like so good that it ends up getting pulled in throughout the entire experience on the regular. When you just need a boss theme and you don't have one distinctly for it, it's quite possible from fear to fortitude could be exactly right, the right fit.
Yeah, Torn from the Heavens is also going in there. I think I'm locking this one in. Because it's like, this is another one of those themes that's like a Realm Reborn theme that comes back constantly. Boy, then <laughs> they they did, yeah. Like this, a realm reborn theme has definitely gotten pulled in for later. Uh, the light motif has been used in a lot of later stuff. It's gonna be real hard, not like I feel like at least two. There's definitely gonna be at least one near raid theme in the Shadowbringers top ten, if not two. But we're not to that problem yet. That's a problem for future us. Three slots left. Hmm. I think Ultimate needs to be in there. I know we're going to have a lot of other renditions that involve Ultima later, but that's okay. That's kind of because it's so good. I think y'all do have a point that, it, like, though I feel like both from from the Ashes and Primal Timber belong in the top ten, given that they are both renditions of answers in a kind of similar context, it does make sense to stick with one. I think if I have to choose just one of them, I think I'd probably go with Primal Timber. Even though it is very close. Because, like... I like the range of energies in this one. Man, that's hard, though. No, honestly, these both belong in here. Like, they're, yes, they're both using the same theme, but they are both bringing a different, very different use of it. Primal Timbers is much more distinct to, like, the Binding Coils raid, especially, but From the Ashes is something that comes, like, that one comes back. That gets used other places, too, and it's, like, like, if one particular theme deserves to get represented twice in an Aroma Reborn top 10 and like arrangements of answers seems fitting. <laughs> <laughs> I 
I love Thunderer, especially the drama it builds to. But I don't know if it can possibly beat some of these other ones. Even though it is a very, very good ASEAN boss fight battle theme. I think Hubris needs to also be in here as the ninth because, like... If, I can only, if I'm only putting one Crystal Tower in, and I think I am. Well, let, let me hear Shattered again as well. I think it's kind of between those two. Shattered, where are you? Don't hide from me. I love the range of, like, the of energies that uh, Hubris brings. And if I can find... There you are. Extremely good, but I think if I'm picking one of these two hubris, I think is the uh, one that wins out, which does put us at nine. So we can we can have one more. So of our remaining candidates, Thunder, I don't think can be the winner. Good as it is, Shatter doesn't either. Through the Gloom is cool, and that's tempting, but it's probably... Oh, man. So here, here we'll, we'll go through the remaining list. It's just six now. We'll just kind of, like, go through and re reassess. Fear to Fortitude. Godbird enters chat. And also tons of other battles in A Realm Reborn and beyond. Good energy. Battle theme one point X. Not dramatic, just fun. Just a really fun arrangement of the Final Fantasy II theme. A really unusual sort of like orchestral swingy rock thing. I don't even know what this is. Am I at 10 already? Did it get up at 10 now? One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. There we are. Look at that. Well, that makes my life easier, doesn't it? The choices are made. But darn, is it hard narrowing them down. But I think the more I look at it, these, the more I think... Yeah, I like all of these a lot. And I think if I was actually bumping one up, it probably would be from Fear to Fortitude. But... We did it. <laughs> Heck of a soundtrack A Realm Reborn has, turns out. <laughs> Thank all of you so much for joining me for this good dance party. German appreciates it. And thanks to all of you for joining me for the dance party for this whole darn time. And giving background fireworks and lights and whatnot. I very much appreciate it. Also for putting the stage here, which I didn't ask anybody to do. It just was here when I got here. It was like, oh, this works. <laughs> <laughs> it's 
It's been a delight. What a good bunch. <laughs> so, all right. Let's start winding down. Let's start winding down and calling it a day. It's been a nice long stream. And I've had a good old time. But let's shift. Do some chill beats. And wind down. Shift over to... Yeah. No. Wrong. This. Here we go. Winding down. Scruffgriff left. Did I thank you for the five gifted subs? I don't think I did. I think you... No, Ramdom did that one. Ramdom did the five gifted subs again, and I did thank you. But I didn't thank Scruffer Fluff for the 12 months. Or the other KT for the nine months. Thank you both. Thank you all so much for all the subs and gift subs and all that. It's our first stream having passed the one year mark, which is pretty wild. Hey, and thank you for the four months, Hero Sheep. I've had a very good time listening to a whole bunch of Final Fantasy music today. Maybe later on, we can do this for Heavensward, if y'all would like. Or we can play games. Heck, that's also a fun thing to do, I hear. <laughs> I hope y'all are having a lovely Labor Day if you're in a part of the world that does that. I'm very curious to see how this stream VOD and YouTube VOD upload will turn out. The first video game music stream did okay. We'll see about this one. Hey! Thanks for the 12 months visiting from the VODs. I know a year already. <laughs> but yeah, I've had a grand time. Thank you all for joining me. I've been wanting to do it, this particular stream idea for a good while. Well, well, well. We have two very good raid options here. Saren, for one, is doing some art, which is definitely going to be a grand time. But Dan Jones is also playing Earth Defense Force. So we're going to go raid Dan. But I'm going to warn you, uh, I will go ahead and caveat. If you have insect phobia, and if giant insects would definitely be not your jam, uh, maybe go check, say hi to Saren or somebody else. Because Earth Defense Force do like its big bugs. <laughs> But yes, we're going to go say hi to Dan. As soon as these lovely credits with all these lovely names have finished rolling. Thank you all again. I wish I had time to stream more, more frequently. Play more games here, but even just getting in once every week or two is super fun. I'm always happy when you all join me. <laughs> They're pretty long credits for some reason today, Ramdom. Couldn't tell you why. <laughs> well, let's all go say hi to Dan, everyone, and cheer him on fighting the bugs and the aliens and the robots and whatnot. There's so many of them. And they're so big. I'll see y'all later. Bye. <laughs>